And welcome to Corston in Norfolk for our service of Holy Communion. Uh, our service begins here with the notices in the rectory uh, and then we'll go across into our wonderful church for the rest of the service. So as I said let's start with some notices. Um, tomorrow evening if you're on our worship group, uh, our worship committee here in Corston, uh, well you will hopefully know that we're meeting at half past seven. Um, venue to be confirmed but I suspect uh, Mandy and Andrew's house. Uh, this week is half term and so there is no prayer breakfast or little angels this week back to normal uh, the week after on uh, next sunday there will be just one in-person service in the whole of the corston group and that will take place at 10 30 and that will be in corston and we'll be celebrating the feast of all saints day then on the same day later in the afternoon and in the evening there will be services in aylsham for all souls tide where we remember those who have died now those services are at three o'clock and six o'clock in Aylsham. Also next Sunday, because it's Halloween, uh, in church here in Corston, we will have an event called Serene Halloween, which is essentially a safe place for trick-or-treaters to stop off for a hot drink, a craft activity for the children, an opportunity to light a candle for a loved one uh, with some quiet music 
in the background. If you can help with this or if you'd like to come along then please do so or let me know if you can help uh, and we'll find a job for you on the day. Uh, that event starts at half past five and runs for two hours uh, on the evening of Halloween. On Monday the 1st of November there will be a further service for All Souls Tide and that will take place here in Corston. It will be a bit more relaxed and less traditional, less liturgical than the other services in Aylsham. Uh, it will include some popular contemporary music, uh, silence and again the opportunity to light a candle for somebody that you love uh, who has died in recent years. Now that service is in the evening on Monday the 1st and it will start at 6pm. Those of you who knew Gilbert Burton, who sadly died last week, um, will be interested to know that his memorial service uh, will take place on Sunday the 7th of November at 2pm in Hayden. And then the final thing to let you know about is uh, our Christmas craft fair, which happens towards the end of November. Uh, we need prizes for our raffle, um, so if you have any of those then do get in touch and see if you can get them to us in time for that event. So those are our notices. Thank you for joining us this morning. As usual, all the words that you need to take part in today's service will appear on your screen. Let's start our worship by singing our first hymn together. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past 
and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in your Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labour. Together with a great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I am the Father of Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. They came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today the Church marks two significant things in its calendar. First of all, It's the last Sunday after Trinity. Our long stretch of ordinary time comes to an end and we start to look towards the approach to Advent and the so-called Kingdom season. The other thing that happens today is that the Church marks Bible Sunday, a day in the year when we give thanks for the gift of the Bible, which is our foundational text. I had the great pleasure of visiting our primary school here in Corston this week. I'd been asked to go into one of the classes to answer questions about where my Christian faith comes from and what it is that makes me a Christian. Now I talked about lots of things, my story as a person and then as a Christian, and I only took one visual aid with me. Let me find it for you. Here it is. I took my Bible. We talked a lot about what the Bible is, a massive collection of books written over many, many years by many, many different people. And we talked about the different types of literature in the Bible and how the Bible for Christians is the most important resource you can imagine. It contains words of encouragement for us. It contains words of lament if we struggle to find our own sometimes. It contains grand narratives and great stories. It contains poetry and praise. And one of the things in the Bible that crops up over and over again, especially in the Gospels, is the miraculous. In the Bible, things happen which seem to defy the laws of nature. Water into wine, the multiplication of food, walking on water, raising the dead. And today's Gospel gives us an example of healing. Now there are a number of healings where Jesus lays hands or speaks words and people are relieved of their physical conditions. I'm always struck by the fact that they are all so different. In today's healing miracle, the first thing that leaps out at me is the fact that this man is named. That's really unusual. Apart from a couple of the resurrection miracles, we don't see any other named in the same way as blind Bartimaeus. And we don't really know why this is the case. We don't know what was special about Bartimaeus, but the fact that he was named is taken by scholars as good evidence that something actually happened here. There was a man called Bartimaeus who people knew, who claimed to have been healed, who others saw healed, and who was an actual real person, not just a generic blind man, but a particular blind man. Bartimaeus already knows about Jesus. He already has faith in Jesus, because when he hears that Jesus is near, He cries out for him to have mercy on him, even though the crowd calls him to be quiet. And through the noise of the crowd, Jesus hears him. And when Jesus calls him forward, the crowd turns to encourage him. Perhaps they can sense something important is coming. Bartimaeus is wearing a cloak in the middle of the day. We're told this is quite unusual given the environment. We're told this is a sign that he's a beggar. This is his uniform. That would make sense for a blind man, yet another outcast, living on the edge, surviving on the charity of others. 
as Bartimaeus approaches Jesus, he throws off this cloak, symbolically throwing off his identity as a beggar. He has faith that Jesus can transform him from a beggar and an outcast, not just into a healed person, but into a member of the kingdom. Then Jesus asks him the same question he asked James and John in last week's Gospel passage. What do you want me to do for you? Now, there's a whole sermon there about our tendency to assume that we know what's troubling someone. Jesus doesn't assume. He asks, what do you want me to do for you? Unlike James and John, who in last week's reading are asking Jesus for a favoured place in his kingdom, Bartimaeus is humble. He doesn't want glory. He wants to be able to see again, and he knows that Jesus can deliver this for him. In some of the other healing miracles, Jesus lays on hands or does curious things with dirt and saliva, but here he simply uses words. Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Not his own power or the power of God, but this man's faith has made him well. And what does Bartimaeus go on to do? He immediately follows Jesus. Now, We don't know whether that means that he became a lifelong follower. He's never spoken of again, so we just don't know the details. But we do know that at least for a time, he followed Jesus. These healing miracles, I find, are always as troubling as they are inspirational. They always beg deep and difficult questions about the capacity of God to heal and the reasons why God didn't heal my loved one, why God didn't intervene for us when he did for Bartimaeus. I'm afraid I'm not going to give you any easy answers because I don't think there are any. But what I will do is to take you briefly back to the classroom when I was talking to Year 4 last week. I encouraged them to be sophisticated readers of the Bible, reading between the lines, using their knowledge of history and of science, and accepting that we bring our own interpretation to these most important texts and we read them in our own context. If we too take the same approach, I'm afraid it often takes us further and further away from the simple answers we so often seek. We find that as we ponder these passages, we end up with more questions than answers. That doesn't mean the Bible is unfit for purpose. It doesn't mean we should just ditch the miracles as fables and fairy tales. In fact, it means that we have to spend more time reading, thinking and discussing. Because the other thing about the Bible is that it's not a dead and dusty collection of stories. It's a living thing. And I'm sure that the Holy Spirit is present when we wrestle for truth, when we search for meaning or when we lock horns over important parts of our faith, or disagree on what a passage means. Ours is not a faith where anyone can just tell you all the answers, and the Bible is not just an encyclopedia filled with all those answers. Our faith is one which asks us to think, to meditate and wrestle with the difficult bits, to reason and to ponder the way the Bible fits with what we know of science or factual history to lament and rage when it doesn't make any sense as we struggle to see God in the world. The Bible does give us the tools to do all those things. But being a Christian isn't about having all the answers. Being a Christian is at least in part about knowing what the questions are and being willing to ask them together. And I pray that this church, this community of Christians, dispersed as we are over the internet, will be a place where those questions can be asked and where together with our minds, with 2,000 years of church history and with the amazing and divinely inspired resource of scripture, well, we can see where those questions take us together. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes this Bible Sunday, that we may see the wonders of your word, and give us the grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray, Lord, for all who introduced us to the Bible, and all who minister its word to us today. We thank you for all that those who minister have done to continue worship and bring comfort through difficult times. We pray that they may understand how important it is to rest as well as labour and receive service as well as to render it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the universe, we are in awe at the beauty of your creation. We marvel at the vastness of space and give you endless thanks and praise for the bounty of your earth. We are all too slowly coming to realize that we have already despoiled much and are in grave danger of creating a nightmare future. Many people of power and influence will meet soon at COP26. We pray that the Holy Spirit may guide the decisions they make and lead them to consider the welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, this is a joyous time for many, with the return of sporting and social gatherings, and for our children as the half-term holiday begins. We give you thanks for these pleasures. We pray that we remember and respect the safety and comfort of others, particularly while the threat from COVID remains. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for her continued good health. Grant those in government under her compassion and understanding, that they may act wisely to protect us. We remember before you those in this country and abroad, living in areas where higher infection rates threaten. We pray for consideration and equality in the distribution of vaccines. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray at this time of extreme weather events that we are all able to do everything possible to reduce the harm we inflict on your world through climate change. We give you thanks, Lord, for our community here in Colston. Help us to love our neighbours and give to them as we have received from you. We pray for refugees and the victims of hatred and conflict. Help us to remember that we are all created in your image, no matter the colour of our skin. May the Spirit move those who cannot accept or understand this to rid themselves of prejudice and hatred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing, Lord, on all those passing through illness in mind or body. Grant them the comfort and strength of your presence. Bless also, Lord, all those in the medical profession and grant them the power of your healing spirit. We bring before you the crisis facing the care profession. We pray that more resources may be allocated to this sector and more respect and consideration be given to those who work in it. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. As we wait for your coming in glory, we pray for all those who have passed into the fullness of your kingdom. We give you thanks for Agnes and all your saints in glory, for our benefactors who have gone before us. We pray for all our loved ones now departed. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We offer each other a sign of peace in the comments. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. God of all grace, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>